you've got hundreds of 700 million people living below the malnourishment line still. They're invisible and they will become visible. That's Africa. They are invisible and they will become visible. The AI revolution is ramping up rapidly. I'm interested in how this technology can benefit Africa and how Africa can have an advantage that is not necessarily understood by the masses with AI. That's why I think this video is very important for Africans around the world to wake up and understand what is happening and the ways in which artificial intelligence is going to impact specifically the continent of Africa and hopefully give us an advantage. For those of you that don't know, my name is TJ. I've made the transition to open up a business in Africa, coming from the UK. I've also met my partner in Africa, and there's so many insights and things that I'm learning now that I'm in tune with what's going on on the continent. And this channel is about sharing my business journey, what I'm doing, the things I'm learning. So if anyone else is interested in following the path to the motherland, they can use this channel as a resource to do that. Just like calculators have been able to magnify what we're able to do with maths, so too AI is going to magnify our capabilities across multiple domains. When you mix that with the demographics of Africa being such a young nation, I think the median age is 18 or 19. The population is growing at around 2.5% a year. Africa is in a great place to take advantage of these technologies and its intrinsic situation, demographics, location, resource-rich continent, and start to level the playing field in terms of its position on the global stage. I believe wealth is going to flow into the continent more. That's why it's a great time to think about coming to the continent so that you can ride that economic wave, you can contribute to that economic growth. If you've ever been curious as to what it might be like to pick up sticks, move to Africa and start a business, I've got a great proposition for you. All you have to do is subscribe. It's totally free and you can watch, see if I do it. Maybe you could do it too. So I'd like to do a little breakdown to back up the things that I'm saying with a conversation with Peter Diamandis and Imad Mustak. Both of these guys are highly successful businessmen and in particular, Imad Mustak is the founder of Stability AI, which is one of the world's largest artificial intelligence companies in the world. Google had their MedPalm 2 model. The papers just come out in nature. A, it outperforms doctors on clinical diagnosis, which is crazy for a few hundred gigabytes of a file. Yeah. B, it outperforms doctors on scores of empathy. I found that amazing and totally logical. It doesn't judge you. It doesn't judge you, but then, you know, a doctor is split a million ways and they're tired and they're grumpy or this or that. Yeah. And some of us get good doctors. Most of us don't. Yeah. Some of us get good teachers. Most of, like, I'm not saying education is bad because of the teachers. So many teachers try so hard, but their attention is split 20 ways and they're underpaid. You know, I'm not saying that programmers will be, the age of programming will change because programmers are bad. There's so many hardworking programmers. It's just, again, the nature of these things will change when you can scale expertise. And everyone has expertise available to them on tap. I've been on the stage, you know, just pounding my fist saying, listen, it's going to become malpractice to diagnose someone without an AI in the loop within five years time. And, and probably in some areas, it'll be uh, inappropriate to not yet illegal. Can you see how quickly these guys are talking about this type of change and development? five years time, even if he's wrong and it's 10 years time, that's still close to now. And probably in some areas, it'll be uh, inappropriate to, not yet illegal to. And then at some point soon after that, the best surgeons in the world are gonna be humanoid robots that have every possible, you know, atrial, uh, you know, variation, every possible you know uh, history of, of surgery and they can see an infrared and ultraviolet and they haven't had a you know uh, argument that morning with their husband or wife and it becomes the best and these are these are demonetizing and democratizing forces for health they're massively deflationary as well but i know i agree completely with this because ultimately what's going to kick it off is is your doctor ai enhanced yeah lower insurance premium lower copay yes because there will be real economic incentives. Has this been cross-checked by the technology? Yeah. Reduce the cost. My favorite subject. I want to interject here and relate this directly to Africa and the developing world at large. You see, when 
the Western world, when America and all the places where um, medical facilities are at the top level and they've got the best doctors, I think they're going to be very um, careful and step by step about how they start to implement artificial intelligence. There's going to be lots of oversight, um, especially when dealing with people and there's gonna be regulatory boards to deal with and when is it appropriate to have AI and not have AI and then people will have their concerns and fears and that is gonna hold back the cutting edge of the technology. The technology is gonna be in advance of that um, integration into the medical field. But in places and developing countries, um, they're going to be much more ready to use artificial intelligence at the bleeding edge in a faster way because the need is so much higher. Governments, doctors, the, the, the oversight, the regulatory boards are a little bit more motivated to implement technology that can help. Is, you know, you probably know this. How many, how many medical articles are written in journals every day? I don't know. It's 7,000. Wow. And it's like, how many has your doctor read today? <laughs> you know, and there may be that one breakthrough that happened this morning that is the key for your diagnostics. But I mean, even if they've read it, right? Like absorbing it is one thing, having the mental models. These are kind of something else. This is why you need comprehensive authority to update, which is what this technology allows to happen. You can see how AI is going to be able to take information in the medical field, analyze a patient, operate on a patient, you know, you may not even need a doctor. We've seen in this conversation that it outperforms in empathy. You know, it outperforms in every sector of the medical industry. This, this technology is going to mean that procedures cost less, they're less labor intensive for the human beings. And we're essentially automating the medical industry. Our young population are gonna be healthier, stronger, we're gonna have access to the medical care and all of a sudden on the dimension of health, Africa can start to compete and become on an equilibrium with the developed world. You said things like, we're already seeing some surgeries can do done better by robot surgeons than human surgeons. It'll be all surgeries. Yeah, it will be all surgeries soon enough. Let's talk about education yeah, yeah. because today, um, education hasn't changed in since the, the, the one room classroom, half the kids are lost, half the kids are bored. You're teaching to a series of tests. You're teaching for a industrial era world. It should be fun to learn. And it should be fun to teach. And fun to teach, yes. I think this is both of them, because what is the nature of a teacher in five, 10 years? Again, 10 years is a dramatically short period of time for education, which has been the same for a century. Yes. But the thing is, it is inevitable that every child will have their own AI. So your 12 year old will be 22. When they get to 22 and they come out of let's say university still is around, yes. university. Yeah, if university is still a thing. <laughs> yeah, they will have their own AI that's learned for at least five years about them. Yes. That can fetch them any information in any format of any type and write anything yeah. or create any video or movie for them to... S that's a crazy thing. Imad himself actually has a project where he's implementing AI in some African countries. And if Africa can take a hold of this, we again, can have a sense of urgency around education of our kids. I know budgets are tight, I know things are, are tight, but if they can have a long-term view, the cost of it will be compressed. Understanding that the cost will come down, it's not just about giving every child a laptop, it's about giving every child access to an AI model. This is going to actually raise the intelligence of the youth. Um, the connections in the brain, the, the, the way that the brain develops is going to be affected by the way that, it's, that AI will be able to educate children. So we're gonna have more intelligent kids at a younger clip and there's going to be more of them because of our demographics. So this is another advantage that AI brings to level the playing field. This is coming, but there are 7 billion people on earth. And all of a sudden, in a few years, they're all going to have to grapple with the questions that we're discussing now. And it's not a probability. If the technology stops today, mm -hmm. then you know, it stops increasing its capability. Today, if yes. it stopped today, 
yeah. you would still have the entire legal profession, media profession. Journalism profession. They're all disrupted yeah. if it Medical stops today, yes. but it's not stopping. Yeah. Uh, and it's accelerating, isn't it? It's accelerating. The amount of money going into this sector goes up every single day. Yeah. My total Russell market calculation is that in the next year, a thousand companies will spend 10 million, a hundred will spend a hundred and 10 will spend a billion. That's $30 billion being put into the market. Yeah. Self-driving cars at a hundred billion dollars total. Yeah. This will be a trillion dollars going into this because do you know what I've got a trillion dollars? 5G. Mm -hmm. Is this more important than 5G? By orders of magnitude. Orders of magnitude, so. Yeah. Not only is it more important than 5G, but it actually, 5G enhances it and it enhances 5G. So think about Starlink coming online, providing internet across Africa at an affordable price. At the moment it's expensive, but that price is going to come down and you can be on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro or on the South Pole or in a remote village and you can get high speed, broadband speed internet at your fingertips. Then you add AI into the equation and you add a disruption of a marketplace that he's talking about that is trillions of dollars. We have to think about this and when there's a market that's moving, it's much easier to build wealth. You just ride the wave, you sit in it and you ride the wave. You build companies that utilize the technology, you build companies that help other people facilitate the, com the, the technology. You, you utilize the technology for the company you have and you propel yourself on this massive rush. It's like before the internet was a thing and then the internet comes online and people were talking about it. Well, the first adopters, the early adopters, the people that implemented websites and things on their business started to see the potential of the internet. They learned more and they got a first mover's advantage on everyone else. So where can, where can we fit in as Africans on this, on this boat that has left the harbor, but we can still sit on that boat and we can still move with the wave. In the old internet, the energy was used at the time of running the AI. And then you'd collect the data and that would be low energy, relatively right. speaking. It flips the equation because you pre-compute it, you teach the curriculum up front, and you send these little graduates out to the world such that you can have a language model now running on that MacBook yeah. or an image model running on that MacBook drawing 25 to 35 watts of power to create a Renoir that can talk and recite Ulysses talking about <laughs> Barbie, <laughs> you know? What he's saying is that the way in which AI is developing means that we can have massively powerful AI on small devices, on a MacBook, something that can, that can rip, whatever it was he said, um, say Ulysses, a Renoir that can, that can recite Ulysses on a blah, 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 blah. You can use massive leverage AI that only takes up a small amount of data locally because the AI has already been trained on a model before it reaches that local space, your smartphone or your laptop or your tablet, um, to such a magnitude that now it, it, it can just be placed there and you can execute massive scale computation. So you can have essentially a lawyer that has a small mobile phone and that lawyer is enhanced by a thousand X, a million X, because he has the power of this AI on a small device. Why is this interesting for Africa? Because it doesn't mean we need massive resources and massive wealth to proliferate um, across Africa in order for Africa to get on board with this. What it means is we've already seen smartphone revolution happening in Africa. Many, many, many people, and it's growing every day, have smartphones, can afford smartphones. So when your AI can run on your smartphone, it's like, you know, Africans can do YouTube because you can do YouTube on a smartphone and edit the video. If you had to have a MacBook that's $2,000, the barrier for entry on YouTube is what the people that can afford a camera and a, and, and a MacBook. But the barrier for YouTube is way lower because everyone can utilize the smartphone with, which has a camera on it and some editing software and they can get online. So this is the same thing for AI, or maybe even more so because the relative power 
versus the barrier of entry is so low. So this is gonna proliferate everywhere. That's insane. All on your MacBook, because we've that's, done the pre-computation. That's insane. And this is, because then what happens is, the technology can spread when anyone can run it on their MacBook. They don't need giant supercomputer server farms because we've done the pre-computation with Starlink, with 5G, with this, with it being optimized, because these models are still not optimized even. We yeah. feed them junk. Early days, early days. We feed them junk, which is also dangerous. And again, we should move to free range organic next. AI. So but it'll be, on, it'll be in front of every person. And then what it will do, in my opinion, is that 30% of the world that is invisible, that has no internet. Again, imagine what the world without internet would be like. Some people like paradise. No, yeah. it's oh. because you've got hundreds of 700 million people living below the malnourishment line still. They're invisible and they will become visible. That's Africa. They are invisible and they will become visible. What does that mean for, 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 for the GDP of Africa? It means that everyone can work on a global scale and earn money and have access to the best information, have access to information in your language, in, in, in a way that you can understand it, and then you can synthesize that information. You can create content. You can be a lawyer. You can be a doctor because you don't have to be the expert. The AI will, you will leverage the expertise of the AI. So you can be, it won't be like, did you go to university to become a doctor? It will be like, do you have a doctor AI? And all you'll do is just set up the conditions on ground for a doctor AI to help your community. It's, it's hard to predict exactly how it will proliferate, but it's going to change even the most rural village. And they will suddenly get agency and they will get all of the world's knowledge at their fingertips. I think there's a responsibility for anyone that wants to achieve something, particularly for diasporans, to personally try and understand what's happening with AI. AI is creating change on a magnitude that is very difficult for us to understand. It's going to impact us in so many ways. We need to think about it in more than just a casual way. We need to educate ourselves. We need to take the responsibility of looking online understanding how this technology is impacting us specifically whether that be through reading articles blogs and for me the easiest thing is to watch interviews like the one i've just shown so i can get a grasp of what's happening youtube is a great resource and the information is all there on the internet when it comes to subi the fashion brand um, it's involved in the design process it's involved in my content creation process so i'm already utilizing it to be more effective if you like this video, I think there's another video that will be perfect for you from my channel right here.